I wasn't going to review Swiped. I hadn't even heard of this movie before last week, and there were already a few good reviews of it out on YouTube, so I felt comfortable just letting it pass me by. But then the creator of Swiped did an oopsie. She did a big oopsie. She started threatening people for criticising her movie. I'm going to enjoy this. Swiped is a teen comedy that was first released back in 2018 on iTunes and Amazon and has more recently made its way to Netflix, where it began to receive a lot more attention, almost all of which was negative. Wherever you look, this movie is getting panned, both by critics and by the general audience, and rightly so, because it's really, really bad. But I'm not going to be doing what I usually do, which is go through the whole film tearing it apart in detail. If you want something more detailed, go check out Elvis the Alien's video. He does a great job highlighting just how much of a dumpster fire this movie is. The focus of this video is not so much on how bad the film is, but on how its creator has responded to all of this criticism, which is where things get really spicy. It turns out that Swipe's creator is extremely butthurt about criticism and very trigger happy about copyright, which is why I won't be showing much footage from the film itself, except where I can definitely say it qualifies as fair use. To put it simply, the film is awful. It's definitely the worst of these teen movies that I've seen, especially on Netflix, and that is saying a lot. The whole production feels very amateurish, not so much a daytime TV movie, and more on the level of a first year film student project. There are many, many inexcusable technical mistakes. There's a lot of bad blocking for example, like characters are still at the edge of the shot so you just get this blur in the corner of the frame, or the characters just move in front of the camera blocking the shot, both of which are really sloppy. The mic placement is sometimes off, so characters can sometimes sound louder than others. And, and there's, there's an, an echo, echo in a few, few scenes, scenes because, because they, they didn't, didn't bother, bother to compensate, compensate for it. it. If you make us an app, like Jungle for Girls, I just might let you stay here. It's a good idea. Don't really mess me up. Speaking of sound, a lot of the soundtrack just doesn't go with what's happening in the scene, to the point where it's really weird and inappropriate, and sometimes it's too loud while characters are still speaking. Not that you're missing out because the acting is on par with the amateurish production. Believe it or not, Noah Centineo is the best thing about this movie because at least he has some talent to be able to work with what he's given. But with everyone else, it feels like they rounded up people from the local university and just said, There you go. Act. A lot of the dialogue is stilted and poorly written, and this combined with the cast's inability to sculpt this sh** into something interesting, means that it's very hard to care about these characters or what happens to them. None of this alleviates the fact that this film is really boring. There are a few moments when it veers into so bad it's good territory, like when we first see the nerd character's workstation and this epic hacker music starts playing, but then it turns out to be just a bunch of whiteboards and post-it notes. And some of the lines would feel right at home in a Tommy Wiseau production. Yeah, I mean, you can tell so much about a person by their name. What? Overall though, it's tedious, and for a film that's only 90 minutes long, that's quite an achievement. The writing and acting are just not engaging enough to justify sitting through it, and even when it's unintentionally funny, it's still the least funny out of all of these teen movies, so it doesn't even have that going for it. I was on Tinder for about half of the film, and even though I didn't get any matches, I still feel it was a more productive use of my time, which is somewhat amusing to me because the story revolves around hookup apps. The story is as bad as everything else I've mentioned so far. It's poorly written, and again, it's boring. Partly because it's so cliched and predictable that I didn't feel like I was watching anything new. It follows your typical nerd who struggles to make friends at college. These three hypersexed frat boys are in the same computer science class as him, and they want to pass it for some unspecified reason, even though none of them show any aptitude for it. So they commission the nerd to design a hookup app for them. Not a dating app. A hookup app. In order to be on the app, called Jungle, Girls are required to not ask for the boys' names, or give any personal details, or ask to see them again. They assume that all the guys are going to want to be on this app, so yeah, thanks for assuming that we're all pigs. They also assume that all the women will want to be on the app if they want to be with anybody, because that's where all the men will be. Whereas, in reality, a lot of women would just... not do that? And we all know that it's the men that go wherever the women are. That's why they have ladies' nights at clubs. 
it's not for equality. The film is intended to be a satire of dating apps and hookup culture, especially among the youth of today. But the message falls flat because of how out of touch, heavy handed and ridiculous it is. It's a giant swing and miss. The three boys that want to create the app are utterly loathsome. They're complete misogynists who basically see every hole as a goal. And the film implies that the men who create and use these apps are, with few exceptions, this callous and objectifying. And the women, especially the young women who want to hook up and use these apps, are portrayed as being idiots or sluts in the worst possible sense of that word, and are treated as such by the other characters in the film. In fact, the whole film is an exercise in slut shaming. It implies that there's something psychologically, morally or intellectually wrong with the people who just want to hook up, no strings attached. Sure, it's not for everybody, but why do you have to bash the people that want to do it? It's exactly the kind of attitude towards dating apps and hookup culture that you'd expect from somebody that hasn't had sex since Reagan's second term. The satire fails because it comes across as so implausible, dated, condescending and insulting, especially towards women. The writer seems completely ignorant of the way that dating apps work and of the people that use them, taking a very judgmental view of both. And there's some jabs at the youth, the sort of thing that boomers enjoy and share on Facebook. And that's just the tip of this iceberg. In sum, it's terrible, and not even worth an ironic watch. And since its creator seems to take particular issue with spoilers in reviews, here they are. When something that you've poured your heart and soul into and put out there for all the world to see, starts to receive a lot of justified negative feedback, there are three ways you can react. You can accept the constructive criticism gracefully and use it to improve your future projects. You can just ignore it and get on with your life. Or you can do the third thing. The thing that you should definitely not do. Deny the criticism and lash out at your critics. You've heard of Daddy Derek? Well, say hello to Mama Fishman. Anne Deborah Fishman is the writer, producer and director of Swiped and the owner of Night Dove Pictures. And she responded to the people who rightfully called her film the pile of steaming batch that it is by threatening and insulting her critics. And in at least one case, threatening to sue and then copy striking a YouTuber who made a bad review of her film. And considering what I now do for a living, that last one hit me a little bit close to home. Before we go any further, I just have to say this very clearly. Regardless of all the shitty behaviour that I'm about to outline, do not harass this person. Don't do it. It will not help the situation, and it will just give her more ammunition. When Anna Mentor spent two paragraphs of her article on Decider.com talking about the characters of the film Swiped, discussing how bad the film was, and not in a particularly scathing way, Fishman sent her an email, which she then proudly posted on the official Night Dove Pictures and Swiped Facebook pages. Now, I can't prove for a certainty that she is the one that owns those pages, or the official Twitter page, or the official Swiped Instagram page. But considering that she signs off emails from the official Night Dove Pictures Gmail account using her own name, and given the similarity in the language used in those emails and in these public posts, I'm 99% confident that it is her. She first incorrectly attributes Mentor's article to Divider.com, which doesn't exist, and then goes on to accuse Mentor of not understanding satire, and then... F*** me, it's so bad. I'm just gonna read this. If the message of Swiped continued the propagation of the absurd and false narrative constantly being promoted in the media, that all women enjoy and benefit from anonymous and casual sex, no doubt you would have liked the movie better. Wow. F***ing wow. That is not how you respond to a negative review. Using a moral cause as a shield against criticism is a scummy thing to do, and Fishman sees herself as a crusader against hookup culture, which she believes objectifies women and gets them to treat themselves like they're nothing more than a sofa being traded on Craigslist. She even claims that hookup apps are inherently degrading and dangerous to women, ignoring of course that men are objectified on these apps in more or less the same way, that many women enjoy hooking up, god bless them, and some even see it as empowering. Fishman is hardly the first person to take this perspective on hookup culture or to present traditional courting as more ideal. And it's funny that she claims to be standing up for women when she treats the women in her films so poorly. This is something that women have noticed, and it's why most of the people that I saw publicly shitting on the movie were women. 
When so many women are criticizing your supposedly feminist movie as being misogynistic and misguided, you know you fucked up. But Fishman couldn't accept her feminist credentials being questioned. She claimed that women who hated the movie didn't understand its message and that they need to be more enlightened. And why would she refer to them as females? That's what neckbeards and incels do. Is it because she has as low an opinion of women as they do? It's an interesting question, because in responding to her critics, Fishman does seem to be more rude and aggressive towards women when compared with men. When she's addressing women, especially younger women, her comments come across as extremely condescending. This isn't universal, of course, but it is a noticeable trend. When I worked in hospitality, there were certain women, usually over the age of 40, who would be far more deferential towards me than they would be towards my younger female colleagues, who they would treat with an air of snootiness and superiority. And I'm getting very similar vibes from Fishman. This attitude may explain why she feels more comfortable taking such a dismissive tone towards the younger women who criticize her and her movie, even going so far as to slut shame them on Instagram. It might also help explain the difference in her reactions to YouTubers who criticised her movie, which I'll get to in a bit. On Facebook, she switched between her personal account and the official swiped account, using the latter when she wanted to be more aggressive and condescending, thinking that people would be too stupid to notice. And like your typical lol cow who just can't let anything go, she resorted to the usual worthless responses such as, That's just your opinion. No, it's the opinion of the vast majority of people. You can just turn it off and watch something else. Oh, I wanted to. Believe me. That because the movie is on Netflix, it therefore must be good. Wow. Your film beat that benchmark set by Holmes and Watson. You must be so proud. Questioning why people are so focused on her and her movie, because it's sh You're trying to preach to people and your behaviour is contemptible. Claiming her critics are too stupid to understand her movie? No, you're just too stupid to write it properly. Assuming that the people that criticise her movie are being paid, or that they have some relationship to the YouTuber she threatened, neither is true in my case. Insisting that she receives many messages from women saying that they like the film? <laughs> yeah, whatever. And claiming that most people are loving the film, which, judging by review aggregating websites, is total bullshit. But we can look a bit deeper into this last claim. On IMDb, Swipes got a 3.5 out of 10, which is already pretty bad. But if we look at the user ratings, we see a lot of 1 star ratings and a lot of 10 star ratings. Okay, so maybe the film was polarising. But if we then look at the user reviews, out of 214, 160 of them are 1 star. That's roughly 75% of all user reviews being 1 star, and 1 review for every 8.8 .8 user ratings. Compare this to the 10 star reviews. Can you guess how many of them there are? Four. Yeah, only four. That's less than 2% of the total number of user reviews and about 253 ratings per review. Hmm. Compare this with The Room, which has a similar IMDb score and a lot of 10 star ratings, because The Room is amazing, but those ratings are all pretty much ironic. Out of 551 user reviews, 197 of them, which is around about 36%, give 10 stars, and these reviews are detailed and hilarious. While the few 10 star reviews for Swiped are much shorter, and I'm pretty sure two of them are ironic. Hmm. It's the same thing on Rotten Tomatoes. It shows an audience score of 61%, which is not bad, but then if you look at the audience reviews, it's pages and pages of one to two star reviews, and a few positive reviews at the end. Hmm. Even allowing for the fact that people are more likely to leave a review of something if they didn't like it, this level of discrepancy between the ratings and the reviews seems off. I'm not saying these ratings and reviews are fake, because I can't prove that definitively, but this looks really dodgy. And it's what I'd expect of someone who tried to beg for reviews on Twitter. But if you think the stuff I've talked about so far is bad, fasten your seatbelts, because it's about to take a f nosedive. It's time to talk about Trin Lavelle. Trin is a YouTuber who reviews pieces of media by giving her thoughts on them as she watches them. She reviewed Swiped, and as you can imagine, she was pretty negative about the film. The video was made in her usual style of showing clips on screen and then giving commentary off camera, and employing more reaction channel style commentary. There's a lot of grey area when it comes to fair use, and it's not entirely clear how much footage would disqualify your video from counting as fair use. Even when there is a transformative purpose behind the use of the copyrighted material, as is the case in Trin's video. 
It's ambiguous at best, but Fishman very clearly believes that it isn't, stating both publicly and in emails to Trin that because Trin used over 20% of Swiped, and because that footage made up most of Trin's video, that her usage was excessive and therefore not fair. Now of course, I'm not a copyright lawyer, but I couldn't find any legal basis for this 20% claim, and Fishman doesn't offer any, which you'd think she'd be able to do because she's a lawyer who used to specialise in intellectual property protection. Oh yeah, she's a lawyer, by the way. That would explain a lot. That always reliable source called Wikipedia lists two cases where the use of the entirety of a work was found not to bar a finding of fair use, at least in the US. So as far as I know, she's just pulled this number out of her ass. But if you break down Trin's video, she only uses roughly 10 minutes of footage from Swiped, which amounts to less than half of her video, and under 11% of the film. So both of Fishman's claims are bullshit, and she's exaggerating to justify her subsequent behaviour. Because if she was truly concerned about this being copyright infringement, she would have just put a content ID claim on the video, or taken it down. This would have still been shitty, but it would have been far more professional than what she actually did. Which was to insult Trin on multiple public forums, calling her an idiot, a moron, talentless, which is somewhat ironic, and a thieving thief, as opposed to a non-thieving thief. She then both publicly and in an email threatened to sue Trin for damages for copyright infringement, claiming that Trin's review was harming both Fishman's and the film's distributor's economic interests, and said that she was contacting Audible, who sponsored the video, to get them to stop sponsoring her, and YouTube to try to get Trin off the platform entirely. Even if she's within her legal rights to say that this is copyright infringement, that is an insane overreaction. I've seen the emails that she sent to Trin, and it's honestly pathetic. She admits that Trin's video passes the transformative test of fair use, but says that it doesn't pass the amount test, insisting on this 20% thing that we've already proven is wrong. She then insists that Trin's video is harming her economically and also harming Netflix. She doesn't provide any evidence or reasoning to support this, and it reads like a blatant attempt to intimidate Trin into compliance by threatening to bring this massive corporation into the matter. She gave Trin two options, recut her video and only use trailer footage, which has nothing to do with fair use, so she shouldn't have to do that. If you are reviewing a movie, you are allowed to use clips from that movie. That is literally what fair use means. Fishman also offered to have a public conversation with Trin so they could have a dialogue about the movie, but again, there's nothing legal about that. Trin is under no obligation to do that, and Fishman cannot force her to do it. And it smacks of an attempt to get some more free publicity for her film. And it's possible that Fishman thought that if she were in a conversation with Trin, she could bully her into accepting her point of view. But when Trin rightly said no to both of those options, Fishman took Trin's video down and gave her channel a copyright strike. And by the way, Trin is 17. So Fishman, a grown woman, has been acting this way towards a 17-year-old girl. Maybe I should contact Netflix and tell them that one of their business partners is behaving this way towards someone who is legally a child? I wonder how they'd react. Fishman then emailed Elvis the Alien and Danny Gonzalez, telling them to alter their videos on Swiped, or else. Elvis made his email public, and in it she wants him to remove clips from the last half-slash-third of the movie because they are spoilers. She doesn't bring up the 20% rule from earlier, even though Elvis does employ a lot of clips from Swiped in his video. Now her contention about fair use seems to revolve around the fact that the clips used are spoilers, which has little direct bearing on fair use, if any at all. She doesn't mention spoilers in her emails to Trin, which makes me somewhat suspicious that she actually cares about that. And look at the difference in the language she uses and the way that she addresses Elvis. She doesn't call him a thief, she doesn't insult him, she tones down her threats, and she doesn't offer him the trailer footage and discussion options that she offered to Trin. Nor did she take down Elvis's video when he rightfully just ignored her, or Danny's when he removed a few clips but he claimed that it didn't seem to be enough for her. The difference is that Elvis and Danny have over 900,000 and 2.7 million subscribers respectively, so maybe she thought that they were too big to risk f***ing with. The other glaring difference is that Trin is, once again, 
a 17 year old girl who, with her relatively smaller channel size, looks like a much easier target to intimidate. And we've already seen how Fishman takes a harsher attitude towards her female critics. I also believe that because Trin is a member of the demographic that Fishman is trying to target with her message, to have her reject that message in this way must have struck a nerve. Yeah, really fighting that patriarchy, aren't you? Ugh, oh, what a fucking rabbit hole, Jesus Christ. You guys might be tempted to go and watch Swiped just to see how bad it is, but I would urge you not to do that, because I don't want to support this kind of sh** behaviour. And Fishman, if you're watching this, I highly suggest you look into the cases of Derek Savage vs I Hate Everything, Digital Homicide Studios vs Jim Sterling, and Matt Hoss vs H3H3 Productions. All three belligerents in those cases tried to abuse copyright law to punish or silence their critics, and they all lost. They are all textbook examples of how to not react to criticism, and of how to destroy your reputation online. And that's the path that you're treading. When I Hate Everything made a video tearing apart The Amazing Bulk, another terrible movie, do you want to know how its creator responded? Lewis Schoenbrunn. I hope I said your name right, Lewis or Louis. I don't fucking know, Lewis. The director of The Amazing Bulk. Well, it ain't Barney the Purple Dinosaur! Well, not so amazing bulk, in this case. Sent me a paragraph in a private message explaining how he enjoyed my video. I do urge you to pause this and read the entire thing, it's quite good. But I thought this was the fucking coolest thing that could have happened. I have so much respect for Mr. Schoenbrunn for this. He sums it up absolutely perfectly when he says, I welcome all comments, good and bad. That is how you respond to criticism. That is how you endear yourself to the online community and build up goodwill for yourself and your film. You could learn a lot from this. Instead, you're choosing to act like a petulant child. You're supposedly a professional and a grown woman. So f***ing act like it. Give Trin her video back. Learn how to take criticism. And while you're at it, learn how to make good movies. Well, that one was a bit different, wasn't it? But I do hope you enjoyed it. Big shout out to all my lovely supporters on Patreon. If you do like my stuff, consider becoming a patron yourself. Feel free to follow me on stuff to stay up to date and join my public Discord server. Links to all that stuff are down below. I'm planning on going to some conventions in the UK this month, so I'll be posting details about potential meetups over on those forums. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you next time.